Welcome back, welcome back. We invite you to take your seats. Not you, Mr. Mayor, that's okay. You can take the photo. It's all right, it's okay. Welcome back. We invite everyone to take their seats and we can resume our program. Thank you. So we hope you enjoy the food and conversation at lunch. And I know you're continuing to enjoy the conversation and that's okay. So coffee and dessert will be served in a little while during our panel discussion. So have no fear, sugar and caffeine are on their way. So thank you to all of you who've been texting during lunch and you've been texting your pledges, they've been appearing on screen. So thank you so much for that, for your generosity. I am now super excited to announce that our good friends at Southwest Airlines have just given us a $5,000 match for any additional texts that come in before the end of the day. So thank you, Southwest. $5,000 matching. So if you didn't get a chance to text your pledge now, it would really be valuable. It would help us earn that match. Thank you so much. Thank you also for participating in our client raffle. To find out if you're a lucky winner, Please look for the poster boards that will be located by the raffle tables after the program is over. All winning numbers will be posted and you can collect your raffle items at that time. Also, please keep sharing on social media. Just to remind you, we have our Let's Guess Social contest going on. If you're posting on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter, remember to tag your photo, CTWBDC, and post it before three o'clock today to be entered into a drawing for a $500 gift certificate from the Greenwich Spa. So all that wonderful is happening, all that wonderful social media, texting, sharing, the in-person networking. And now we come to one of my favorite parts of the program where we get to honor some amazing women. So I'd love your attention to honor the, the next group of women that we're gonna be sharing with you. So please welcome to the stage Amy Bloom, director of the Daphne Seabold Culpepper Memorial Foundation, a dedicated philanthropist focused on enriching the lives of residents of Fairfield County with her time, talent, and treasure. She's gonna present our first award. Amy. The WBDC Women with Impact Award is presented to a business or community leader who has personally exemplified the mission and goals of the WBDC to support economic equality and prosperity for women. Our first Women with Impact Award is presented to Robin Imbrogno, President and CEO <laughs> of the Resource Consulting Group LLC for her exemplary leadership and generous sharing of her time, talent, and treasures with her community. As a founder of a successful human resource consulting company, which is one of the largest female-owned businesses in the Hartford region, Robin provides her corporate clients with guidance, wisdom, and business savvy. As a member of the WBDC Board of Directors, Robin offers that same support to WBDC in all matters related to HR. It is my pleasure to present the first ever award to Robin. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, Fran. Someday when I grow up, I want to be just like you. <laughs> A special thanks to the WBDC team who make all of this look so incredibly easy, though we all know it's not. This award, Women of Impact, comes at a specifically poignant time in my life, as 30 years ago this week, I started my journey into entrepreneurship though I'm fairly confident I didn't know how to spell it back then. <laughs> I'm proud today, 30 years later, that I still have my first husband, <laughs> my first client, and my first employee who's still here with me today. <laughs> Thank you. 
Creating an impact often creates a wake. I would like to thank my husband, Bob, for learning how to swim in large wakes and for making sure that our kids, my amazing daughter, Ashley, and my brilliant son, David, never swam without a vest. I am blessed to have my niece here, an entrepreneur and power powerful woman in her own right, her dad, my brother, my older brother, <laughs> who has supported me my entire life for as long as I can remember, and my nephew, David, who will soon create his own wake as he brings our business into the next decade. To my team, who I spend my days with, and my friends, who I spend my nights with, thank you for always jumping into the lifeboat with me. To my clients, several of which are here today, the Mitchell family, the innovative kids folks, the Levin family, Calzone Case, Joe Calzone, and several others, Thank you for allowing my team to support and impact your business. It has truly been my honor. Thank you. Congratulations, Robin. Thank you so much for being here and for all you've done for WBDC and your clients. And now to present our next award, I'd like to introduce one of our past Women with Impact honorees, Carla Harris, Vice Chairman of Global Wealth Management and Senior Client Advisor at Morgan Stanley. And those of you who were here last year remember Carla's inspiring fireside chat with Fran and her amazing impromptu vocal performance. Please welcome Carla Harris. We never forget. We never forget. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure and honor that I introduce this next and most deserving honoree. She is an outstanding leader, an intellectual, a trusted advisor, a mentor to many, and a sponsor to deserving emerging leaders. She is the president and CEO of the Greater Jamaica Development Corporation, a community building organization that plans and advances real estate development to revitalize Jamaica, Queens, and strengthen the region. She is a commissioner on the New York City Planning Commission, and as the former chief operating officer of the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, she managed day-to-day -day operations of the organization, and during her tenure, was responsible for overseeing a fund of approximately $150 million focused on impact investing via loans and grants. She is a leader who, working at the intersection of real estate and community development, has advanced historically disadvantaged communities. She honed her leadership skills as a principal at Accenture and as a vice president at Morgan Stanley in the Institutional Equity Division. She is a dedicated philanthropist, subscribing to the gospel, to whom much is given, much is required. And to that end, she serves on a number of boards focusing on eradicating poverty, stimulating economic development activity, including the Regional Plan Association, Grameen America, East Harlem Tutorial Program, just to name a few. As an inspirational leader, she has helped to shape the future of her alma mater, Marymount Manhattan College, serving Marymount in the house, <laughs> serving as a chair of the board and leading the trustees in their most important role in choosing the next president of that esteemed institution. She's a sought after voice in the media and has been featured in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Commercial Observer. Most recently, she was selected for the inaugural list of Crane's New York Business 2018 Notable Women in Real Estate, ranked number two on City and State Magazine's Most Influential People in Queens, and featured in a podcast by Morgan Stanley entitled Access and Opportunity, a master of urban renaissance, and it's now available on iTunes and Google Play. She is the kind of leader that others gladly follow because she is thoughtful, 
She is a visionary. She is fair. And most importantly, she creates other leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, she is my friend, and she is Hope Denise Knight. Now, it, it is my regret to tell you that on the way up here, Hope became violently ill. And she called and said, could you possibly stand in my place, which you'll see here in just a second. But she wanted me to say she is so honored to receive this award. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, WBDC. And she wanted me to say a special thank you to all of her family and friends who came out to support her, as well as all her new friends. So thank you very much. It's my honor and pleasure to introduce a new friend to WBDC, Heather Ziegler, who is the managing partner of the Stanford office of Deloitte. We're so honored that uh, Heather has lent her time and her talent to helping us make this event a success and by introducing us to our next honoree. So Heather, please join us to introduce your friend and colleague and mine. First off, I just want to say I love the energy in this room. I come to so many events, and I don't get to sit here and smile and laugh as much as I did today already this morning. So thank you all for, for that. Um, I really appreciate it. I couldn't be more pleased to be able to um, honor Stacy tonight. Um, well, today, I guess I should say, this afternoon. Um, <laughs> apparently, I'm ready for night. It's Friday, after all. Um, but Deloitte, as many of you know, Deloitte has been a leader in inclusion and diversity efforts. Um, what you might not know is we were the first professional services firm to put in formal women's and diversity inclusion um, initiatives back in 1993. And we're an organization of firsts in that regard. First female chairman of the board. Thank you. First Hispanic. CEO, first female CEO, first female CEO of a consulting practice of our size, and Stacy is Deloitte's first chief client officer. So in this role, Stacy is a member of the executive, a key member serving our client experience team. She directly reports to our CEO and leads all of the partners of Deloitte, as well as all of our client engagement teams, in delivering a differentiated client experience. And our business is our clients. So that's a pretty big, big, big ask. She's, um, in addition to that, she has been, um, she served on our Deloitte US board. She's held many leadership positions, too many to even list them all here today, but within audit, in industry, across geographies, and she is and currently continues to serve and has served as a lead client service partner and senior business advisor to some of our biggest clients. Throughout her career, she's been a prominent leader and advocate for women and a role model for men and women alike inspiring women and men to fearlessly follow your career ambitions. And she's certainly a role model of my own. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce and congratulate Stacy Janiak, Deloitte's Chief Client Officer and WBDC Women of Impact Award winner.
Thank you, Heather. Thanks so much for that introduction. I, too, am filled with energy from being in this room. And having started my week flying to Osaka, Japan, and getting back here in the States on Wednesday, this is just the boost that I needed to make it through the end of the week. So thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell you something you might not know about one of my other honorees today. Talk about impact when I was attacked by my chicken and juice flew all over my jacket. Robin said, take that off. I am the master at getting out stains and started going to town on it. That would not happen at any other place than right here. So as I reflected on this award, which I am truly, truly honored to receive, I have to accept it really on behalf of the women that had a profound impact on my life. And I think probably like many of you in the room, some of these women were with me from the very start. So I had a, the really good fortune of growing up with three strong women role models. I had a, one grandmother that was a professor at the University of Louisville in the English department. I didn't think that was strange at the time. I had another one who I loved visiting at the bank that she worked at for 30 years. And I had a mother who overcame physical disabilities from polio as a young child to go do lots of things like walk on her own and learn how to drive and, and hold down a full-time job. They never said it, but they were the e explicit example of, of self-determination, of economic independence, and of just inspiring you to go for your dreams. Now, at the same time, I have to give props to the, the men that supported those women. Two amazing grandfathers, one of whom thought in the 50s that it was a better idea to go out and find a housekeeper and a cook so that his wife could go pursue her dream in academia. Now, those two individuals just celebrated their 70th wedding anniversary. There is a lesson to that and to how you empower the ones that you love. My dad was the same way, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my husband, Jeff, who supports me and our family, our two wonderful kids, in an amazing way. In fact, Jeff and I started at Deloitte in 1992. And as Heather just said, that was a year before our then CEO, Mike Cook, launched the initiative for the retention and advancement of women. That had an incredible impact on my career in many ways, but not, not the least of which was the fact that it really cemented in our culture the value of diversity and the importance for leaders to be inclusive. So the last four years, we had over 50% of our new partners principals, and managing directors be women and people of color. We're incredibly proud of that. We're incredibly proud of the work that we're doing to develop women at our clients in the C-suite to be able to take board positions. We don't have enough women in the boardroom. And we're, yes, Fran, let's go. And we're thinking about the women in business of the future and supporting incredible organizations like Girls Who Code. We have to expand the opportunities for the women that are coming up. Now, I'm sure that all of you have things that you are really proud of that your organizations are doing. And I know that all of you have people that showed you the way to impact others, that showed you how to pay it forward, what it meant to use our voice and our resources to really empower others and to level that playing field. So I have two asks for you as you leave today after we have this wonderful conversation that we're gonna have. Uh, the first is to send a text, write off an email, maybe even call one of those people that had an impact on your life. I have a partner of mine here, Alicia Rose, who has taught me that random acts of gratitude are a beautiful thing. So make someone's Friday with a random act of gratitude. And the second thing I'd ask you to do 
is to think about who are you advocating for today? Who is on that list that you're trying to pull up, that you're trying to push to that next level, that you're trying to open the door for? And are you being as inclusive as you can be with those individuals? Thank you very much for this award. Appreciate it.